Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to talk to you about something that is both right up my alley and also a little bit outside my comfort zone. I, I always want you to pray about what I'm saying, but I really want to actually just come out and ask you this time, please pray about what I have to say. Seek personal revelation and guidance about what I'm about to talk to you about because it's that important. Earlier this week, I got a phone call from a friend of mine and it was a group a group call and I happened to be out. I was on a walk with one of my sons and it was kind of inconvenient, but also kind of perfect timing because we happened to be going right past a table and chairs. So we were able to sit down and I was able to to take a break and, and have this conversation, at least part of it. But I ended up leaving the conversation early because basically the whole point of the call was there was a, a Brighamite who had left the Latter-day Saint movement and become a Protestant, a non-denominational Protestant. And the two things that this brother took with him was Jesus Christ, that's good, and the idea that only he is right, which, as you know, I'm going to say is bad, you know, it's a cultural thing. I get it. You grew up in the Brigham Church. Everybody is wrong but you. And so you've got to convince everybody else that you're wrong. So you know, I've seen it all the time. You become an atheist, you become an evangelical atheist. You got to go and, and tell these people that, that used to, that still believe what you used to believe, that they're wrong and why they need to join you now. Um, this guy became a Protestant, doing the exact same thing. I thought I had the, tr the truth, just like you think you have the truth, but now I've got the real truth. You got to follow me. And what made it really embarrassing, I ended up leaving the call early because it, I could just feel the spirit of contention on the call. And I, I just don't have time for that. I'm, I feel that the contention and following Satan is just a waste of our time as Christians. But I felt really bad. And so I want to introduce him to ecumenical Christianity. And so I shared a link to the fellowship website. And, you know, I chatted just a little bit in, it was a Facebook messenger call. Chatted just a little bit there. And honestly, it got to be very embarrassing because then another Latter-day Saint that was part of the call was saying how he was the only one that's right and everybody else is wrong. And, okay, well, if, as Latter-day Saints, if we can't work together and say, hey, we've got truth here, we're going to be pointing fingers, no, you're wrong, no, you're wrong, like that Spider-Man meme, then... How is a Protestant going to take us seriously? And likewise, if any if any atheist or someone of some other religion outside of Christianity were to see this conversation and see how we as Christians are fighting with one another, it's like, how how are they going to take us seriously? And I, I really think that this is a big reason why Christianity is failing. It used to be a lot easier. In Joseph Smith's day, pretty much everybody was Christian. I mean, there were people who weren't, but they didn't really talk about it. Um, I'm very convinced that several of the founding fathers, including George Washington, definitely, they may have been deists, but they, they didn't seem to be Christians, especially with their comments like, you go to church so people see you at church so that they feel better about you and what you're doing. Okay, whatever. That's, that's not why I go to church as a Christian, but okay. Um, but they could fight with one another because everyone was, was looking for a place to belong. But nowadays, there's so many places to belong. You, you don't have to be a Christian and feel like you belong to a group or, or belong to society in some way. And so when we fight today, rather than people picking a sign and joining fights, they, they just walk away because they can. I am seriously concerned that Christianity is going to fail because we can't follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, because we can't love each other where we are. And I say that as someone who's watching Christianity on its last leg right now. I see people, I've, I've read the statistics, I've read the reports, people are fleeing Christianity because they see us as a hate group. We hate each other. We hate people that aren't like us. And it's, it's not, in my mind, the true Christian message. And so I want to look at, in the book of Avar, 
We have the first vision story. For those who don't know what the Book of Avar is, it's basically the history of the Latter-day Saint movement, our, our collective shared history, everything from some revelations that um, Joseph Smith's father and mother had before he was born, all the way up through the, uh, you know, the stories, the journal entries, uh, the history of the coming forth of the Book of Mormon, and the revelations that Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery had. And it ends right when the church is legally organized and in April of 1830. So basically in chapter 5, and I'm going to be looking at verses 25 through 31 here. So what are the issues here that Jesus lists as the abomination? He said all their creeds are an abomination in his sight. One, the professors are corrupt. Why are they corrupt? Two, they draw near with their lips, but their hearts are far from him. Why does he say that? Because three, they teach for doctrines the commandments of men, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And because of these things, he forbade Joseph Smith to join any of them. What's the difference between the conversation that my friend invited all of us to earlier this week and the churches here in Joseph's conundrum? We have a Protestant saying that all Mormons are wrong. We have a Latter-day Saint saying all of the Latter-day Saints are wrong. I mean, it's the perfect storm, right? We are not allowing people to find God for themselves. We're saying, you got to find God through me. And I have a big problem with that. And so did Joseph Smith. At one point, there was a man who was going to be excommunicated by some of the higher-ups in the original church because he had said some things about Scripture that they felt were incorrect. And Joseph Smith defended the man. He said, I don't like this. This is too much like the Methodists. If you don't believe what we're saying, you're out. He said he wanted to be, he wanted to have the freedom to believe as he wished, and he didn't want to be a part of an organization that tried to force people to think as they thought. Think about that. Joseph Smith is saying he didn't want to be a part of the organization he was called to put together. And I, I, I don't blame him. And I know there's a lot of people that will say, well, my church isn't like that. We encourage, we encourage revelation. We encourage people to go to God and figure things out for themselves. We're different. Are you? I will say if you're part of the fellowship, you're correct because we take revelations from anybody. We say, here it is. We're going to present it to you. You go pray on it. Figure it out. Let us know what you think. Those that are familiar with the fellowship know that my wife and I left the LDS church. And five years later, my wife was finally excommunicated. Leaving was not enough. Why? They didn't say anything when she be, was ordained a high priestess. They didn't say anything when she was ordained a bishop. They didn't say anything when she was ordained and sustained co-president of the fellowship. Member of the first presidency, they did not care. But she had a revelation. And they had to kick her out of a church that she didn't even belong to. So here's my test for you. If your church is different, I would like for you to see what your church thinks about my wife's revelation. Not mine. The one that Christine had. And when I say that, I'm not saying that they have to accept her revelation or reject it. What I'm saying is, are they allowing you to pray on it, read it, and make up your own mind as to whether you will accept or reject it? Because that is the key. That's the abomination. When they say, we have these creeds, and you either are in and you're following them, or you're out. Yes, there are certain things that people can do that should get them cast out of organizations. We in the fellowship have our own thing. You know, we have, we have our own policy against sex offenders. 
for the protection, for, for their protection if they've repented, and for the protection of the victims. We have things in place to keep people safe. I fully understand that. But when you tell people you're only allowed to believe this and you're not allowed to believe that, it causes stagnation. There can't be any growth because there's no exploration. Getting to know God and building a personal relationship, we grow in grace, line upon line, precept upon precept. If we're not allowed to do that, the Lord will call us to leave and go somewhere else. Now, I don't feel comfortable calling out other churches because I... I want us all to be one in Christ. This is against my comfort zone. This is outside of my comfort zone. But the Lord's telling me to flip the script. We can't just say, let's all unite in Christ. We also have to say, let's walk away from the apostasy. The only way we can do this is by following the commandments of God. And what did Jesus say were the greatest commandments? To love God our neighbors to love God first but the second is like unto it love your neighbor as yourself and he even explained to us what that meant in uh, chapter 5 of Matthew perfection is loving your enemies look it up it's at the end of the chapter so I would ask you is your fellow Christian your enemy because if they are, then God has commanded you to love them. And if they're not, then they're your neighbor. So God has commanded you to love them. As long as we are bickering, our creeds are an abomination before the Lord. That doesn't negate priesthood authority or power. It doesn't mean that people's churches aren't true in their own way. It just means that we can do better. We can be better. So brothers and sisters, my Thursday thought for you today is, will you? Will you be the people the Lord has called you to be? Will you be better? Will you do better? Will you follow Jesus' teachings in Mark 9, 38 through 41? Where Jesus said, we don't contend against other people just because they're not with our group. Can we throw away these commandments of men to weaponize the word of God? Can we avoid that form of godliness and accept the power thereof, which is the love of Jesus Christ and love for one another? Can we make people more important than our creeds? And can we take time to listen and learn from one another, even when we disagree? Because if we can, then we can save Christianity. And we can be the people the Lord has called us and set us apart to be. That's my Thursday thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.